Bueno, muy buenas tardes a todas las personas que se están conectando en este momento con nosotros para esta nueva edición de Webinar Acipet. Vamos a dar un par de minutos para que se unan más de los asistentes que se inscribieron. Muchas gracias. Recording in progress. 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 Laura, are we still waiting for people to join? Yes, yes, but we are going to start right now. Eh, bueno, nuevamente le damos la bienvenida a todas las personas que se están conectando con nosotros a esta nueva edición de Webinar CIPED. Les habla Laura Silva, líder técnico de la asociación, y qué bueno que, que se conectaron con nosotros en esta tarde. Para esta edición tenemos un webinar eh, que nos trae Water Tectonics y American Engineering Company, que se llama filtros H2 oil, tratamiento de agua de producción. Cómo reducir el uso de químicos y mejorar la eliminación de sólidos utilizando la tecnología H2 oil. Les recordamos que hacemos como siempre la dinámica de este tipo de webinars. Hacemos la presentación y al final vamos a tener un espacio para resolver todas las preguntas y comentarios que ustedes tengan. Los pueden ir eh, escribiendo a través de la cajita de preguntas y respuestas o también por el chat de, de esta sesión de Zoom. Si lo desean, pueden de una vez escribirlas en inglés para que las podamos hacer de una vez al final de la sesión. Eh, Jenny, can you change the slide, please? Ok. Next one. Ok, para este webinar tenemos una agenda ya definida. Primero que todo, vamos a hacer la presentación de nuestro speaker para esta tarde y también de, de nuestra ingeniera eh, asociada, Nancy Vidal. Vamos a, a tener la presentación como tal y al final la sesión de preguntas, comentarios y observaciones que puedan tener. Eh, next, please. Bueno, para iniciar, nuestro speaker principal de hoy es Denny Ims. Él es el director de Water Tectonics en Washington, donde desempeña un papel en el liderazgo de la innovación en la empresa. Tiene más de 25 años de experiencia en ingeniería de tratamiento de agua, planificación estratégica, operaciones y gestión. Denny tiene un título en ingeniería civil de la Universidad Estatal de Arizona. También es un ingeniero profesional registrado y tiene una licencia de operador de clase 4 de agua y Aguas Residuales, certificado por la ADEQ. Deni ha dirigido eh, equipos técnicos desde pequeñas empresas hasta compañías Fortune 100. En Water Tectonics, Deni trabaja para garantizar que las decisiones sólidas de ingeniería de procesos se integren adecuadamente en todos los aspectos de ingeniería y entrega de un proyecto. Tiene un sólido conocimiento técnico y de trabajo sobre el terreno de los sistemas de tratamiento. Finalmente, ha desarrollado proyectos alrededor del mundo, incluidos países como Argentina, Colombia, Oman, Australia, Brasil y Estados Unidos. Eh, next, please. Y eh, la ingeniera Nancy Caterin Vidal es ingeniera de petróleos de la Universidad de América con una maestría en gestión empresarial de la Universidad San Juan Bosco de la Patagonia. Y tiene experiencia de más de 20 años en el área comercial y operativa de la industria de and gas en multinacionales reconocidas como es Lumberger, San Antonio Internacional y Summon Energy. Actualmente se desempeña como gerente comercial en American Engineering Company e ingeniera de desarrollo de nuevos negocios en Petroseismic Services. 
La ingeniera Nancy se enfoca en el fortalecimiento, actualización y aplicación de los nuevos avances tecnológicos que sean en la permanencia y progreso de las compañías del sector de oil and gas, en la prestación de los servicios, calidad y rendimiento económico. Para ello mantiene un nivel profesional, integral y la moral para enfrentar los retos que demanden tales objetivos. Sin más preámbulo, nuevamente muchas gracias a todas las personas que se están conectando y te doy la palabra, ingeniera Nancy. Está silenciada. Hola, ¿me escuchan? Ahora sí. Uh -huh. Denis, do you hear me? Ok, perfecto. Ok, gracias Laura por la presentación. Yo quería presentarles una diapositiva del grupo Cluster Cial. El grupo Cluster Cial está compuesto por cinco empresas que abarcan áreas como inspección, ingeniería, tecnología, de la información y management. Y esta es una complementariedad que se da entre cada una de las compañías. Pues en este momento no voy a entrar a, a explicar qué hace cada una de las compañías, pero la idea es que nosotros ofrecemos soluciones integrales que generan valor a nuestros clientes con la premisa de construir relaciones cercanas a largo plazo. Eh, Cluster Ciar es una compañía que lleva más de 30 años fundada en Argentina y pues como le, comentamos, le comenté anteriormente, eh, Está representada en Colombia por American Energy Company, que es una compañía de ingeniería integral y todo lo que es eh, interventoría. Eh, siguiente, next, next Denny. Eh, digamos, en este caso, eh, Water Tectonics es uno de nuestros aliados técnicos para todo el holding de compañías, para todo el cluster CR. Y en Colombia eh, eh, lo representa American Energy Company y RC. RSN Gestión en Argentina. Eh, bueno, en esta oportunidad va a ser un speech en inglés. La, la, en inglés. Eh, la presentación va a ser, eh, Denis va a, a, a presentar toda la parte técnica en inglés, pero sin embargo nosotros eh, nos tomamos la molestia y pues la ayuda para que todos tengan la presentación en inglés. So, Denis, eh, do you have the, the words? Thank you for the opportunity to be representative here in Colombia. Um, please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation around, around this uh, new technology. Uh, when I first saw it, I was really impressed uh, by this media and, and have realized that it can really simplify the water treatment process in, in treating produced water for reuse in many applications. Uh, the objectives today are really around to introduce this revolutionary technology, talk about how it can be used to recover both oil and for recycling and reuse of water. Uh, this media simplifies the, the treatment uh, to remove oil and recover oil, as well as to remove suspended solids from water. Um, we also want to talk about those benefits and protecting the environment through water reuse, which is a, an objective I think all of us have. Uh, hopefully this presentation will help to empower you to understand how you can drastically reduce OPEX and CAPEX and remove some current oil treatment facilities with this simpler technology. Uh, you can get rid of uh, some chemicals you use, especially polymers with this uh, technology. And you can also really, fo the focus of this technology is really treating certain applications, both in upstream and downstream. For example, frac water, produced water, polymer flug, steam assist, gravity drainage, um, as well as treating waste processes and tailing the pond. Uh, in the midstream, it's really around oil transportation and, and, and that, any water treatment there and, and soil remedi remediation. The media has also been used in, in bilge water applications. What is H2O oil media? It is really a high porous filter media made from a unique diatomite or, uh, soil that is bound together and uh, separate, and it helps to bind and separate contaminants in liquid because of the unique properties of this particle. It has a very large uh, surface area that's created with pores within pores. You can see this 
picture down here in the bottom, which is uh, the surface of the media, has a very large surface area. The media comes in different sized grades where the larger grades are used as the under drain around of a filter bed and the smaller grade, uh, sizes are used in the filtration bed depths. Uh, typically the, the media has the same porosity, although we, there is one version of the small media that is enhanced with a higher specific gravity. The, how it works. The principle is really around coalescence. The media is highly oilophilic, which means that it repels oil. Oil does not stick to it at all. And it helps to coalesce in the interstitial space between the media and trap oil and suspended solids. This typically works with and performs best when the API is below 45 or the specific gravity of the oil is above 800 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, in applications where the oil and TSS are below 300 parts per million, we see typically greater than 99% removal of both oil and suspended solids. In that range between 300 and 700 ppm, we see a removal somewhere between 95 and 99% and removal. And then in, in ranges from 700 to 3000, um, it, it has lower removal efficiency and typically can handle those high uh, cycles or high concentrations of oil and TSS with no negative effect. It just means more frequent backwashing. Uh, the media can easily replace uh, existing media like a nutshell filter or something with no additional modifications to the filter vessel uh, and can improve performance for both oil removal and suspended solids removal. The media is also capable of operating at very high temperatures and is successfully treated temperatures in, uh, at 85 degrees C and even over 100 degrees C um, under pressures as um, within the pressure ranges of those vessels. This slide is really a comparison of nutshell filtration and H2 oil media filtration. Um, a nutshell, uh, the principles behind this are very different. With nutshell media, the working principle is really absorption, and it really has a very low retention of, of oil and suspended solids. And when it's back flushed, it needs to be agitated vigorously and scrubbed to remove that oil and suspended solids. The back flush volume typically is somewhere between one and one and a half percent of the treated water volume. With H2 oil media, the working principle is coalescence, and it can hold 10 times higher uh, amount of mass when compared to a similar size nutshell filter bed of, of oil and suspended solids. The regeneration is a simple back flushing step with no air scour, and its back flush volume is typically less than 0.6%. These are two entirely different principles of operation, and H2 oil media has a significant uh, improvement in performance. This table here is a chart uh, also comparing nutshell filter media with H2 oil media. One of the first uh, things really to look at is attrition loss. Typically with a nutshell filter, you're losing somewhere up to 10% per year, um, where H2 oil media, because it's, it's uh, denser and it's harder, um, and it's not as organic, that less is typically less than 1% per year. As I've talked about a little bit before, it holds a much higher uh, mass of oil and suspended solids between backflush cycles. Um, it's also compa uh, compatible with polymers and coagulants. In fact, polymers and coagulants can enhance filtration where if they are used upstream of a nutshell filter, they can foul the bed. And, and are not compatible with nutshell filter media. Uh, the backwashing step uh, is also quite a bit different where you have to scrub a nutshell filter media. And of course the backwash volume being much lower with H2 oil media. Um, The, the main principle, of course, is, is being oleophilic and 
and uh, the coalescing versus uh, hydrophobic and, and absorption media. Uh, preparation of the bed is a lot different with uh, H2O oil media. You simply back flush it and do a, a quick rinse where you need to do a 24 hour soak with a nutshell filter um, and compact it before you put it into service. And finally, around performance with a nutshell filter, you need to keep uh, oil and water below 100 and TSS below 30. Uh, and with and typically have an IGF upstream of it with a with H2 oil media, you can take water directly from the skim tank and no chemicals are required. And you can um, with with contamination at 30 p 300 ppm of oil and 100 ppm of TSS, you can get below three for both oil and TSS or more than 99% removal. Some of these benefits uh, include a reduced backwashing and higher um, mass retention of the media, uh, where a nutshell filter probably needs to be back flushed at least once a day, and H2 oil media filter would only be required to be back flushed every three to five days, which would result in a significant water savings. Um, it also has exceptional performance, especially with heavy oil. Um, and consistently produces water quality of less than 3 ppm for both oil and TSF with feeds up to 300 ppm. It also has the capacity to hile variable influent loads of TSS and oil while staying in spec because of the way that it holds the, the mass of the oil and suspended solids. Uh, the standard operating flux for H2 oil media is somewhere between 18 to 22 meters per hour and the back flush flow rate is just a little bit more than double that at 30 to 50 meters per hour. And again, no scrubbing is required for this media and it will easily release all trapped solids and oil that's in the media. <clears throat> uh, it has a very low attrition rate and unlike the nutshell filter, h oil media is neutral to coagulants, can be very effective upstream especially when there's high TSS is expected on a continuous basis and it will not foul the filter. Um, that's also uh, where h oil media is neutral to surfactants and has been tested up to 10 ppm of surfactants upstream and is actually uh, surfactants and other coagulants can help uh, remove TSS during a filtration cycle. Uh, the media is neutral to all kinds of hydrocarbons, uh, polymers, bitumen, asphaltines, paraffins, and wax. I know that some of the fields I've been in in Argentina, asphaltines is a big issue in fouling tanks and filters. Um, and, and this media uh, is, it would not stick to this media or foul this media. This slide is really kind of a demonstration talking about an existing installation that has a IGF and a, a nutshell filter. Um, in this situation, you could replace both the IGF and the nutshell filter with an H soil media filter and achieve better results with the same influent. Um, and there would be no, no, as I talked about, no scrubbing required. It would be highly, uh, extremely high oil and TSS upsets do not affect this media negatively. All you need to do is you probably have more frequent back flushes. <laughs> this is a video I'm gonna show here. It, uh, when I saw this video, I'd seen the presentation, people had talked to me about this media. But what really hit home for me is when I saw this video for the first time. This is a uh, run at about 32 times normal speed, and it's about two and a half minutes here. And what's interesting to see is you can see both the oil and the uh, TSS uh, gathering within the filter media in this video shot. This was a small column, about uh, two inches in diameter, or about 50 millimeters. And it was about uh, um, 100 millimeters tall or 10, 10 centimeters tall. You'll see it here in a minute. 
but you can see the oil and suspended solids collecting in the interstitial space between the media. You can also see the bubbles that build up on top of the media and they don't stick to the media. You can see how even the water flow as it's going through there pushes uh, the oil and the TSS away from the media uh, as it's filtering. Here in the top right hand, of the picture, you can see this a little bit further in the filtration cycle. You can see the test column and then a close up of that test column as the oil and solids are being pushed around the outside edge of the test column through the media. Here's a good shot showing the buildup of the oil on top of the media and uh, the oil being pushed through by the water pressure. You can see how, how uh, you can't see the water moving, but you can see the water moving and how it pushes the oil to the outside of the filter. You can see how it pushes it down through the media as the differential pressure builds within the system. When I saw this for the first time, I was fascinated by what this could do and what this could mean in the, in the industry. Uh, being able to especially remove chemicals and chemical um, dosing in oil and TSS removal for produced water. We just have a couple more minutes here. If you'd like to look at this video again, there'll be a link provided in the notes after the this session and, and you can uh, look at that more at length if you'd like to. This is a sample process flow diagram. Um, in this case, we're showing two different uh, media filters with N plus run redundancy or 50% redundancy. Um, because the media has the same specific gravity, you really can only have one size media in a tank at a time. Uh, for applications where you have to have really good performance, we typically will have two filters in series. Now, this doesn't have to be the case. There's lots of applications where, you know, uh, we can remove uh, 300 ppm of oil down to 3 ppm in a single step. It's just, um, and we can do it in a single step filtration. There's also uh, the one micron size media also has uh, an additive that can be added to make it denser than the, than the other media so that when it back flushes and layers out, the smaller, smaller particles end up on the bottom of the filter uh, and the larger particles are at the top. In this case, you have uh, uh, water uh, up front in a separation tank the water is pumped and oil is pumped through two stages of the filter media. Um, and in, in this case, we have a bag filter just as a protection. Uh, and then back flush water is used to, to back flush or treated water is used to back flush the, the filter. Uh, with the constraints on OPEX, operators are always exploring ways to get rid of bottlenecks and reduce operating costs and increase efficiency. Uh, in a lot of ways, H2O media fits perfectly within these goals. Um, this media will get rid of bottlenecks and upgrade the facility with minimum cost and performance and downtime. It will also help to reduce costs by eliminating the need for an IGF in new applications and also reduces chemical costs and associated equipment. Uh, it will also greatly improve oil and TSS removal greater than 99% in most applications where it's less than 300 on the incoming. And it easily can handle upsets and remain in spec. Um, and it's a proven technology that reduces maintenance and downstream of equipment due to high upsets and high oil and water TSS applications. <clears throat> This uh, 
technology has been proven in oil and gas and also other markets. It's been used as a pre-treatment step to membrane-based systems, including desalination to protect from algae brooms and oil spills in the ocean, bio-treatment of MBR systems, which can be caused by uh, fouled by oil. It's been a pre-treatment step for ultrafiltration. It's also been used in the metal industry on wastewater treatment and surface water treatment for reuse and in closed circulation systems, and in the automobile industry for shipping and airplane production sites. Uh, it can be used in rainwater collection systems for parking areas, airports and railways to prevent oil from entering into uh, those uh, distribution and collection systems. And can be used in mobile modular systems where oil and water is needed to be treated for reuse or discharge. Other applications include the pulp, paper and pulp industry, um, where this or filtration and recycle water within tanks within a rolling mill, um, or can reduce surfactant use and removal of oils for use water. In the agricultural industry, it can be used uh, for fish fats and waste to effectively remove without clumping in recirculated agricultural systems, and also can be used in bilge water and textile industry. Um, our services and scope really re revolve around either retrofitting existing filter systems with this media or the supply and replacement of filter media um, systems with H2 oil media. We really try to address our the problems our customers have and carry out the necessary tests to perform specific water tests at the site. Pilot tests can be carried out on site uh, using a mobile test skid. We currently have um, one mobile test skid in the United States. We're building a second test skid to move into Argentina and hopefully short behind that one that can go to Colombia. Uh, the filter media can uh, achieve, be used for recycling and regenerations um, if required by Water Tectonics or our partners. Um, and the filtration tests can also be done in our lab um, for specifically hard to treat waters if, re if required or requested. So water tectonics has been around for 20 years. We have over, the slide's a little old, but it's over 1,500 completed projects now. And we treat uh, over a billion gallons uh, a year in, in water. We've done work in 15 countries, including Colombia and Argentina and have over 250 permanent installations. We currently have a team of 50 uh, operators and four systems in Texas that treat over 100,000 uh, barrels of water a day. That's about 250 cubic meters a day of produced water in Texas and New Mexico. In conclusion, I really appreciate the opportunity to come and to present this media to you. Um, thank you for the opportunity. And I'd like an opportunity to demonstrate our, our technology at your site. Please uh, talk with Nancy or Alejandro uh, to start to, they'll help me start to put these uh, opportunities together. I think that we can replace your existing filter with H2O media with no modifications, and you'll see an improvement in an outstanding improvement in the performance of the media filter. Um, we're very confident in our technology with lots of proven installations in the oil and gas industry, and we're willing to work with you going forward. <laughs> Please give us an opportunity to be at your site um, and, and let us. Oh, here we go. Nancy, Alejandra, anything else to add here? Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I appreciate the, this nice pre presentation, this nice technical presentation about uh, our te technology that we can offer here in Colombia and we can offer in Argentina too. So we are going to recollect some questions that uh, Laura is recollecting now. Uh, I don't know if you have uh, any question for the people who is with us in this presentation, Laura. 
Um, okay, I just have one question here, which is, okay, let me see. Uh, okay, we have this first question for you, Danny. It is, what is the function of back filters? So in the process flow diagram, correct? Probably, let me go to that slide. Okay. And, uh, or did, uh... Uh, okay, let me put that down. There we go. You can see this one. No. Había una persona que estaba levantando la mano. Sorry, let me, let me make sure. There we go. Take it easy. Sure. There we go. I'm sharing that screen. I was not sharing. Sorry. So the question is around what is the purpose of these bag filters here? Yes. Uh, in this case, this was just an insurance policy. The existing system already had the bag filters here and that's what they were using. And we wanted to just show that, you know, they, they can stay there. They are not needed in, in most of our designs. Okay. Are, are there more questions? Yes. So okay, here. we have another one here. Um, it is, what is the cost per cubic meter of treat water? The cost per cubic meter of treated water? Yes. Uh, well, it's just filter media. It's, it would be, you know, the same or less than the cost for nutshell filtration. Um, it would, it would be, I have not done that calculation. I'm sorry. I have the cost per, of the media. The cost for the media runs around $4,500 per cubic meter. Okay. And from the same person, is the equipment rent or it stays in the company? Say that one more time, Laura. Is the equipment rent or it stays in the company? Is the equipment is it, for rent? Is it, is it a rental or a purchase? A rental or a purchase. Okay. Yes, exactly. Good, good question. Um, right now, we have no equipment to rent in South America. Um, the treatment system for piloting, uh, we're working on getting a system to Argentina in the near future. Um, and that can be rented and, and demonstrated on site, but it's a small flow rate. Okay, uh, I have this one. Using H2 oil filters, what quality of water do I come out with? Using an H2 oil, sorry, one more time. Using H2 oil filters, what quality of water do I come out with? Uh, yeah, it would be um, this slide right here, right here. Less than three ppm oil and water, less than three ppm TSS. And TSS would be uh, no uh, less, that should be less than five micron, not greater than five micron. Okay. Um, do you have representative company here in Colombia? I mean, if any company represents you, we are quite interesting, interested to talk with you. Um, yeah, so I'm working with Nancy at AEC right now. Nancy, do you want to answer that question? There's a slide for it. Which slide, Jake? Yes. The, the, the contacts, one. maybe. Yeah, yeah, Laura, I'm going to ask this question. Um, okay. The idea for water tectonics is that, that here in Colombia, uh, American Energy Company has the oil experience, has the 
uh, engineers has the technical experience to help water tectonics to improve this technology here in Colombia. So here in Colombia, uh, American Energy Company is going to be a representative water tectonics. And in Argentina, RCN or RSE is going to be the representative of water tectonics in Argentina. The, uh, do you hear me? Yep. Yes. There we go. Okay. Do you have another, another yes. question, please? Yes, we have another one here. How is the final disposition of the filter media managed? Thank you for the presentation, sis. Yeah. So uh, most, you know, the filter media, I don't know of one where it's been disposed of, but it can be disposed of where you would put any um, sand or gravel. Um, because oil does not stick to the media, it does not become contaminated, it does not need to be disposed of as a hazardous waste and can be disposed of like you would with any sand or gravel. Okay. Is any type of chemical necessary in uh, addition to buying the filter system? No, no chemicals are necessary to be used with the filter. They can be used, but they're not necessary. Okay, uh, CAPEX in comparison with NSF? Uh, the vessels are about the same as a nutshell filter. Uh, the media is uh, more expensive than a nutshell filter. But the, but the life of the media is much longer. So the CAPEX will be ho higher, but the OPEX would be much lower. Okay. Uh, where is the media shipped from? Currently, it's manufactured um, in Germany. Okay. How is it work with corrosive waters? Uh, how does it work with crossing the border? Is that what you said? Corrosive waters. Corrosive waters. Oh, yes. Corrosive waters. Yes. Um, so it's it's used in very high TDS water, over two hundred thousand milligrams per liter of sodium and chloride. Um, it uh, it can be used in both high pH and low pH. It's uh, very uh, stable in terms of pH and temperature and salinity. Okay, and what is the media life cycle? Uh, I know applications are that are going seven to ten years and have not been replaced. Okay. Um, would this technology work in an aqueduct? Would it be worth implementing, like cost benefit? In an aqueduct. Um, yes. How do I answer that question? Depends on what they're trying to remove. Um, so it, it acts like any type of filter or filter bed media. You could be used in any type of um, those types of filters. An aqueduct to me is is a transport system, and I don't know how you you filter within a transport system. I, I don't fully understand that question. Okay, is there any paper related with the testing of the unit in laboratories? Yes, let me open that up just a minute here. Uh, this is a test that we ran um, on some water. Uh, this is actually some uh, oily water with asphaltines out of Argentina. We are not seeing your screen, Denny. Oh, thank you. Uh, so this was uh, a project we did, a, a lab test about two years ago. Um, and we uh, you can, this picture here shows the media 
that's uh, between 0.7 and 1.7 millimeters. And this is during back flush. And you can see the media in the test column and the oil being lifted up. This had a very high content of asphaltines within the water system. Um, and this was the uh, uh, back flush water. This is the filtrate, or this is the filtrate here. And here's the test column and the setup. Um, and, and just like shown in the video, you could see the uh, oil being collected on the top of the filter and within that media. This was the feed water. Um, this is uh, the, the layer that had settled down and you can see this TSS and the oil in there. Um, this was, uh, does that say back closer there? What does that say? I, I opened the Spanish version. Yeah, refugio is back flush. That's the back flush water there. And then uh, the feed water. And one of these is the, and then this is the filtrate water here. So I think the pictures show it pretty well. Um, going from this oily mess to uh, something look like that, just through this filter column right here. Okay, um, this one is, do you have videos or photos detailing the cleaning performed by the filter? Do I have a video? The video I showed, and we can, we can make that available for others to watch. Okay. We have this in Colombia. We have produced water streams in high content of chlorides, more than 11,000 per ppm, more than 85% oil content uh, and high content of SST, more than 300 ppm. So maybe you need an API tank, a skimmer tank maybe before to send to these H2 oil media tanks. I mean, pre treatment in order to avoid saturating the media. I don't know if it was, if I was clear to you. Yeah, uh, here, this is the question right here, right? Um, the, this question here, can you see the questions on my screen? Um, no, no, we are no. in the conclusion. No. Uh, maybe he can see the questions in the chat. Yeah, I can. I can see the questions in the, in the chat. chat uh, you can see the some some questions. Can you repeat now, please? Yes, the, I'm the, going the, to send question you the question. So okay. Here, I, I I got it right here. I think. Mm. This is the question here, correct? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we currently use this with uh, chlorides greater than um, 50,000 without an issue. Um, with more than 85% oil content. That's pretty high oil content. If it's 85% oil, you probably need a three-phase separator to separate that oil first. Um, and recover that. Um, and then a high content of suspended solids of 300 ppm. So maybe you need an API tank. Yes, you probably need that first. And then a skim tank. So this, this picture right here really shows where you need this. This filter media goes after a skim tank. So you would have the oil separation up front, then you have a skim tank, and then you would have fil you could filter it then you would put it into a water tank. Um, the feed going in here, you know, I've seen as high as 7,000 ppm, but not 85%. That would be 850,000 ppm. Does that answer that question? Um... We are going to wait to the person who asked it. If, if you can write to us through the chat box, 
if that was answer for you. Uh, we have another one here. I see that a comparison is made with walnut shell systems, but these are not designed for handling high volume volumes of oils, but rather the fine ones. Why that comparison? I'm trying to find the question. Okay. okay. I, I um, see it. Just, just a minute. I got it. Okay. Uh, so this is the, this is the next question you're asking, right? Yes. Was made with walnut, but but these are not designed for handling high volumes of oil, but rather fines. Why that comparison? Uh, mainly, the comparison was there because this is a great replacement for a nutshell filter that's not working well, and um, can reduce backflush and hold much more oil and water. Um, this would work great anywhere where the where you've already done your oil water separation and you're somewhere between 300 or 1000 ppm of oil and you're trying to reuse that oil for polymer flood injection or for uh, steam assisted gravity drainage or any other fracking process where you need to remove the oil and suspended solids this filter fits great there to, as a polishing filter to remove those final bits of suspended solids and oil. Okay, I, regarding the previous question, uh, the person asked, can you repeat the values? I did not understand. Uh, yeah, those, those values are right here on the screen. Um, here, the, uh, here, I got an, another, or I've got a better one here, just a minute, summary performance data. Here is a bunch of uh, different processes and I can send this out in the meeting notes. Mm -hmm. This was a SAG-D process. This was a two-stage filtration system here and hydrocarbons were 20 to 60 and uh, the effluent or outlet water is right here. And we have uh, lots of those processes. Here's one for produced water in Germany. Um, the oil density was 910 kilograms per cubic meter. It had paraffins and wax a lot in there. Uh, you can see the filtration speeds. You can see the hydrocarbons at 320 coming out at less than one. You can see the backflush ratio uh, really low at less than 0.5. Uh, percent to the bottom they do a max test uh where is that at it's in, it's the, one in italy. the one in italy yes uh i also have that right here um where is the case study here's a case study right here that was done uh in italy at a refinery um Uh, and the challenge was looking at at uh, this this process. They put the test in here, uh, test one and test two. So they put it right up here after the API separator, and then they also put it down here um, on on the waste stream separator. And they used the test column here uh, for both of those. And I have and I can share this report and the conclusions of the case study. Um, from this one. So if you go second from the bottom. Right here? Yeah, extreme condition test. Okay, right here, yeah. Yeah, I hear hydrocarbons were 23,000 or 2.3% oil going to less than 110 and 31 TSS. This was a pretty slow filtration speed at six to 10 meters per hour. And this was using a, a, a two-stage filter um, in this application. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. And this one says, upstream flotation systems using chemicals like polymers or flocculants affect your system performance? Yeah, so it does really well with uh, 
flocculants and polymers, um, and they actually enhance filtration. Um, what page is that that I talk about that? No, down one more. Sorry, I'm looking at the... Keep going down, it's at the bottom. There we go, right, right there. That's this one. BCOs. This one? Yeah, so it's this one. Right. Um, okay, they split the slide into two. So there we go. Those bottom two notes talk about how uh, this neutral to surfactants is tested with a maximum of 10 ppm of surfactants. Um, and, and in fact, a small amount of surfactants will also be removed during the filtration process. Um, and so it does well with uh, it's neutral to, unlike Dutch shell filters, right here, it's neutral to coagulants. Yeah, the second sentence down, and then the two from the bottom talk about that. Okay, and when do you need replace uh, of the filter media? Uh, about, you know, I, there's applications that have gone seven to 10 years, unless unless the filter, there's been, there, there was one time that I, I heard a story in, in Canada where the filter was not back flushed for a week or more, and it became, uh, it's plugged with oil and, and and suspended solids. So much so that they couldn't even back flush it. They were they were able to take a strong uh, um, caustic uh, solution and they're able to rinse and break up the media. And using the caustic, they were able to clean the oil and suspended solids out of the filter media and eventually get it to back flush. As soon as it back flushed, it released all the oil that had built up inside of it. Um, and it also frozen that oil had it got so cold up there in Canada that the oil had turned to gel and that was why they had to use caustic and hot water and they were able to back flush it and went back into service uh, and there's been applications where that has exceeded 10 years of service life. Okay, do you see any limitations for the application of this technology? Beside cost and lack of knowledge of final users, uh, do I see any what cost? Limitations. Any limitations? Any limitations besides yes. cost? Mm -hmm. um, so it you know it it need yes it needs to be the oil has to be below forty five api or have a specific gravity above eight hundred milligrams per cubic meter. If it's not uh, that heavy or have that specific density, it does not filter well. So I think that is one of these slides up here. Right here, uh, second line down, has to be an API of less than 45 or greater than 800 kilograms per cubic meter. If, you're, if you have a light oil, this filter media does not work well. Okay, we have um, two, three, four more questions to, to ask. And okay, hi, Jenny, good afternoon. Excellent presentation. Have you made any progress or plan to use H2 oil re remediation in production to lower the water oil cut produced? So there have been a lot of people that have approached us about helping to improve oil recovery. We are testing that right now in Texas. Um, we are able to add those heavier oils uh, in the back flush water, but even when it's back flushed, it still has some water content in it. 
Um, there, uh, let me get that presentation. What was the name of that one? Uh, it's, uh, ports. Okay. Here's a here's a presentation we did for a customer in in uh, uh, just recently in what uh, Wyoming. This picture shows the inlet. Uh, after the first one and the second one, there's not a lot of oil or TSS in this water. It's very clean. Um, but as we went through the data, we had filtration times of up to five or six days between back flushes. Um, but you can see that uh, we started over the course of the of the four weeks we were there, the, the feed tank started to show oil had collected in it. So there was some amount of oil that was separating in the tank. And then this was very telling. This was the effluent picture. And this was the, the back flush waste right here. It had lots of oil. So we had collected oil in this very clear water over the process of a long period of time. And, it, and, it, and potentially it can be used to enhance oil recovery. Okay, um, what is the minimum and maximum pressure necess necessary for the operation of H2 oil and suggested operating pressure? Yeah, um, it, it, like a normal filter, it's somewhere around, uh, um, I know it in PSI, you know, 50 to 100 PSI on the maximum side. Um, that would be around, uh, you know, Five to to five to six bar five to seven bar on the on the high side and on the low side it can be as low as two or three bar or that would be same as kilopascals per square centimeter I think. Okay, Danny. Thank you very much for the presentation and for answering all of those questions. Uh, we now are going to let Alejandro Vargas speak. He wants to say hello. So Alejandro, go ahead. Bueno, eh, Deney entiende algo de español. Simplemente ya estaríamos cumpliendo el horario. Quería agradecerles desde Argentina, desde RSN Gestión, la empresa que es representante de Water Tectonics, veo que hay varios compatriotas aquí en el seminario, y bueno, Nancy es nuestra representante en Colombia, así que los invitamos eh, cuando tengan necesidad de contactarnos, estamos aquí, muchas gracias por haber venido. Eh, Denis, eh, a, final, a final word, can you show us the slide number six, please? Sure. Thank you. Eh, bueno, yo quiero, I'm going to speak to, in Spanish, Denny. Thank you. Eh, eh, bueno, el día de hoy quiero, quiero agradecer a, a CIPET por la coordinación, por la ayuda y por todo lo, la, la, la ayuda no solamente técnica, sino la ayuda comercial que nos brindaron el día de hoy para poder hacer nuestra presentación. La, como les comentaba al principio, eh, Cluster Siac es un grupo compuesto de diferentes compañías con más de 30 años de experiencia en diferentes sectores y sobre todo en el sector de oil and gas. Eh, la idea es eh, hacer, eh, es un corto tiempo, es, es una hora, la idea es aprovechar esta hora de la forma más expedita posible y darles a conocer a ustedes que nosotros como Cluster Siac tenemos diferentes aliados no solamente en la parte de ingeniería, sino en la parte técnica y de soluciones. Y este es el caso que tenemos el día de hoy con respecto a Walter Tectonics. No, eh, es una solución muy importante. Sé que aplica en muchos campos aquí en Colombia. Ya tenemos experiencia aquí en Colombia con un cliente muy importante. Entonces la idea es que ustedes lo conozcan y, y a través de nosotros, de RSN en Argentina y y nosotros, eh, American Energy Company, nos puedan contactar para hacer un estudio de acuerdo a la necesidad o de acuerdo a las inquietudes que ustedes tengan. Bueno, no, no tengo nada más que comentarles. Simplemente darle las gracias a CIPET, Alejandro, Denis, thank you for...
for your presentation. Thank you for teach us uh, so many interesting things about how to use so many technologies that you have experienced in different uh, places and in the world. And gracias a CIPET por, por, por el día de hoy y a todas las más de no sé cuántas eh, personas atendimos, pero yo vi un, po, un pico aproximadamente de 60, 65 personas por Zoom. No sé si ustedes tienen algún pico adicional de personas que nos acompañaron el día de hoy. Muchísimas gracias, Laura, y gracias a todos. Así es. Sí, muchísimas gracias. Queremos agradecerle a las más de 60 personas que se conectaron con nosotros en esta tarde. Eh, les recordamos que ya en la presentación pues, vieron los contactos tanto de Nancy como, como de Alejandro y si tal vez no los alcanzaron a captar, nos pueden escribir directamente en ACIPED y nosotros pues los contactamos con ellos. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Danny, Nancy, and Alejandro, for this presentation. And okay, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank bye bye. Muchas gracias. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Gracias. Bye -bye.